What's going on, Summoners? Welcome back to another episode of Pro Guide's Best Champions Domain, now on patch 11.15. The champions that we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance, but low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. So they're reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken and contested picks in each role, so make sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss out when we upload those. Now hit that sub button and let's get into it. Starting things off in the top lane, the first champion we'll talk about is Tom Kench. After his long-awaited rework, Tom Kench has been restored to his former spot as one of the strongest melee brawlers in the game. He's especially good against AD Bruisers since he can easily itemize against them. And given that those are the most OP picks in the current meta, naturally he fits right in as a hard counter to most lanes that you'll see in solo queue. And what makes him such a good pick is that he doesn't really have a falloff point. Plenty of bullies exist that can beat up picks like Fiora and Jax in lane, but at some point, they usually get outscaled and become useless against them in the side lane. But with Tom, you don't have to worry about playing on a timer. With his rework giving him at least a bit of CC in the form of a knockup, he's also more useful when grouped up. Now you can go in with a diving teammate and be a serious backline threat. As a note on the build, if you end up against an AP mage or another tank, you can also go for a wit's end after Titanic if you really want to stick it to him. And our second top laner for 11.15 is Mordekaiser. Statistically, Mord has been just barely a subpar pick, but a lot of that comes from people not knowing how to play him. In a lot of ways, he's kind of like Darius. Trading as Mord means that you're also shoving the wave, leaving yourself open to being ganked. But if you actually prioritize managing the wave over just mindlessly bonking your opponents, you'll find that you don't die to the enemy jungle as much. <laughs> Crazy thought, right? Anyway, when played well, he was already pretty good, but the buffs this patch are targeting his W. A lower cooldown on the ability means a smaller window where your opponent can punish you, while more damage stored means that when it is up, you should win trades more decisively. Now, even the harder lanes should be more manageable, and in the event that you end up in a winning lane, such as a tank matchup, you will stomp them even harder. In out of lane, it's important to recognize your limits and to know your role in teamfights, so this is another big reason for Mord's overall bad stats. Too many players want to flash ult and AD carry, and sure, there are times when this is a good play, but in general, it's better to just take away a threat to your backline. If you ult an assassin or a diving bruiser, there's no way that you're killing you in the death realm, and you're preventing them from killing your backline at the same time. And there's also champ-specific interactions to consider that make Mord ult way more useful. For example, if Kindred ults, then you ult her, she'll be ported to your realm without the invulnerability. If you ult Zed, he loses his shadows, making him completely immobile and unable to dodge your Qs as you beat him down. Now, if you're tired of being stuck in your current elo, the first step to climbing is fixing your champion pool. So that's why we make these kinds of videos, so that you can find the right champion or champs for you. After you decide on what you're going to play, you then have to learn how to play it right, and it can take lots of hours worth of games to learn a new champion. But you don't have to spend days and weeks doing it alone. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and Xsmithy to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized one-on-one -on -one experience, our top-tier coaches are available 24-7 to help you anytime you want. Whichever option you choose, stop spinning your wheels on your own and get the fast track to hire ELO right now. But anyway, our last top lane pick for this patch is Singed. Despite being pretty much the same champ for over 10 years now, his unorthodox playstyle makes Singed a great champ for getting cheesy wins. Split pushing is already hard enough to deal with in solo queue, but adding his proxy in playstyle usually leads to a clown fiesta. As you soak up farm between towers, the enemy team cannot help but go to stop you. The result is them chasing you for way too long, and most of the time you're able to either escape with your life or give the kill to a tower. Even if they do end up killing you, it's just not worth the time investment. It usually takes a minimum of two people bringing down Singed with his ult while he's running. And in the time that they took to catch you, your own top wave was crashing into tower, denying a lot of XP to your opponent. On top of that, if the enemy jungler is chasing you, his camps are now free for your jungler to take away. And Dragon should also be completely uncontested. Out of lane phase, you'll continue the antics, and if you're really brave, you can even proxy in the enemy team's base, using your ult to zoom out if too many opponents come to answer you. And also, you're not just relegated to this style of play. You'll be building a mix of damage and tankiness, so anytime your ult is up, you are a massive pain to deal with. You do too much damage to completely ignore, but at the same time, you're too durable to burst down. Looking now at some of the junglers on our list, the first pick we have is Skarner. Honestly, I can't even remember a time where Skarner wasn't a decent pick. For as long as I can remember, he's been at or above a 52% win rate, even before the introduction of Turbo Chem Tank. Yeah, he may be a somewhat slow-paced jungler, but with that slow pacing, he's got a lot of consistency. 
Once you have your ult, you are a pick-making machine, able to get guaranteed kills basically every time that it's up. Just make sure that you're keeping an eye on your opponent's items so you aren't wasting it on somebody that picked up a QSS. One really strong selling point for Skarner is that, though he is a scaling pick, he isn't one where you have to concede the early game entirely. While his ganks are weak early on, when you're skirmishing around one of the spires that your team controls, he is an incredibly strong fighter. The combination of the movement speed from your passive and ghost means that you can easily stick to opponents with your surprisingly high early game damage, which can then result in some unexpected kills. Also, if you're interested in playing Skarner but don't just want to be a CC bot, you can also build him carry too. In that case, you'll want to build a Conqueror rune page with Nimbus Cloak and Celerity as secondary runes, and then you'll build into a Divine Sunderer as your mythic. Just note the obvious trade-off of losing a lot of movement speed. This build is especially good against tanky melee bruisers and juggernauts where you need more combat strength over speed anyways. And our second jungler is Kindred. Kindred is a hyper carry, but that does not mean that they have a weak early game. They have the mobility and damage needed to put up a fight in the early game, and they're especially good at skirmishing around strong laners who can tank for you as you DPS down your opponents. But the most important part about carrying with Kindred is playing for your stacks, specifically in the early game. The faster you can reach your 4 stack spike, which grants you 75 attack range, the better. Stacking up with Kindred is like stacking up with Senna, more stacks means more range, which means easier stacks in the future. Failing to do so leaves you a shorter range, making it harder to safely get out your damage, even if you're fed. And as a little tip to get started, I personally recommend always marking the lane that you're pathing towards. For me, that's usually top lane. Most kindreds mark the enemy jungler, since marking a laner usually signals that you're coming, and you'd expect them to respect your gank. But in my findings, that's actually rarely the case. I can almost always get a free stack off of a level 3 gank. And our third jungler to main is Trundle. While he has one of the most basic kits in the game, it's a very effective way to beat down any opponent that you can get onto. There are few, if any, champs that can fight him in a straight 1v1 to the death. That strong ghoulie means that you can easily take scuttle crabs as long as laners aren't getting involved and your lanes have waves pushed in. And if your laners have waves pushed in, you can pretty much always look to invade the other jungler. And while most people don't think of Trundle as having the craziest ganks, his pillar is actually pretty obnoxious to deal with. If an immobile champion is pushing up a bit too far, it is a guaranteed flash blown, and if that's down, it's just a free kill. In fights, Trundle's lack of mobility means that you're pretty much always just going to be front to back, but that's not really an issue. With him being able to steal AD and resistances, you are perfectly fine to play the role of frontliner against other bruisers and tanks. Now next up for the mid lane, we'll start off with Aurelian Soul. Don't be fooled with him being on the nerf list for this patch. You max E last, so it's really just a 500 range nerf until level 14, bringing the ability down from 5500 to 5k flat. You'll still be able to use his strong pushy power to get priority in most lanes and go for those roams that no one seems to be able to respect. Roams aside though, he's also just a pretty strong laner. His W isn't just good at pushing the wave, it also gives a lot of trading power, able to beat up your opponents as they try to match your pushing. If they can't outpush you, they may try to jump you instead, but you're also covered there too, with an instantly popped Q allowing you to immediately disengage from the trade. And once you're 6, you have even more of a safety net with your ult allowing you to force your opponents off of you. But outside of the early game, a lot of ASOL players sort of get lost. Early game, it makes sense, right? Shove waves, roam, and gank. But later on, when players are all grouped up and vision is down, it's not always easy to find a flank. But there's one combo that can help with that. Practice landing Flash Ult Q and you will have an engage almost as good as Flash Tibbers, providing big burst damage and CC that should set your team up to wipe the enemy squad. But despite his high win rate, I honestly don't think I've seen an Aurelian Soul at all all season. If I had to think about it, I've honestly seen Tarek jungle more than the Space Dragon, so that brings us to today's question of the day. What are some champs that you think are good, but rarely see in your games? Aside from Aesol, a champ that I almost never see unless I'm playing him is also Teemo. That one's kind of surprising, because statistically, Teemo is a decently popular pick. But that's just my experience, I want to hear from you, so let me know in the comments down below. Now our second mid lane pick is Kennen. He already had a huge 54% win rate prior to being buffed on this patch, so now he may be the best sleeper OP pick in the mid lane. He does super well against all the melee mids, able to harass them from range with constant poke, while also being basically untouchable himself. If they jump on you, you just EWQ to stun them instantly as you zoom away to safety. And once you're level 6, you don't have to run at all. If they're choosing to get into melee range of you on their own, you should just be able to kill them with your full combo anytime that your ult is up. 
And this is all 1v1 stuff. Kennen really shines in skirmishes and big team fights, having huge AoE damage and stuns giving you amazing setup that makes it super easy for your team to mop up your opponents. Once the game does go later and you start picking up big boy items like Rabadons and Void Staff, you'll even be able to one-shot most of the squishy champs that get caught up in your Maelstrom. As far as the items go, if you're feeling cocky, you can also grab a Mejize before Zonius and cut the last item in our build. Now our last mid laner is Malzahar. As predicted, the nerf's last patch did not do much to stop how consistent he is. Riot really just doesn't seem to have a grasp on targeting a champ where it matters. He's a really, really good champ to main if you aren't looking to be the superstar 1v1 carry every game, but still want to do a ton of damage while also providing foolproof lockdown. He doesn't really have super good lanes, but no lane is awful for him either. In the first few levels, you won't be able to do too much, but after you get Lost Chapter and have some levels, you'll easily be able to clear wave after wave, essentially neutralizing the lane phase. Yeah, that's not the most exciting thing, but you don't run the risk of ever feeding your lane opponent either. If your jungler is playing to gank for you, all you need for your opponent is to move up just a bit too close and then flash ult giving you the point and click to guarantee your jungler gets a free kill. Just make sure that you go for your ult right away. Too many times Malzahars go for an extra E or Q before the ult, giving their target a split second window to flash away themselves. In teamfights, your job is to lock down either a frontline threat or a diver trying to take out your backline. If there isn't an immediately good ult target, no big deal. Just spam your E and Q to melt the enemy frontline since your build is full percentage based damage anyway. Now moving things down to the bot lane, we'll start off with Ash. Being one of League's first champions does not mean that she is by any means power crept. She's basically always somewhere between the A and S tier, and right now is no exception. For one, her high ranged autos and W poke make her a really solid lane bully. Even without mobility, her slows prevent engage attempts from aggressive enemies. And once you get more levels, maxing out W lowers the cooldown to the point that you're basically half poke mage, making lane phase a living hell for your opponents. And the second thing that makes Ash such a strong pick is the abundance of utility that she provides to a team. Slows alone are a really underestimated thing, but when you play against them, you realize how frustrating it really is. Bruisers and Juggernauts are basically rendered useless as they look like they are struggling against Quicksand to get anything done in fights. And then of course there's your ulti. Ash's ult is one of the very best engaged tools in the game, being able to pick opponents that end up on the wrong place at the wrong time. And all this utility comes without that much of a price either. Ash still's got plenty of DPS, rivaling even hyper carries like Jinx and Bane, so you aren't really giving up that much carry potential. Now our second bot lane pick is not an AD carry, but Ziggs. We said they were over buffing him on 11.12, and we were absolutely right. Instead of doing anything to fix how badly he does against Assassin's mid lane, it just made him even more broken as a bot laner. And as it turns out, taking away a bit of his base mana on 11.14 didn't really do anything to change that. Surprise, surprise. But what makes Zig so strong is how easily he can get consistent results. Out of all the things that bot laners complain about, one of the most prominent things is how much you rely on your support. If a support doesn't help you with the wave or know how to trade 2v2, you're basically screwed. But with Ziggs, that isn't much of an issue. Once you got Lost Chapter, you can spam to your heart's content, clearing wave after wave, neutralizing any lane that you're in. And when paired with a poking support, this equals an oppressive lane phase for your opponents. It also works super well with a support that wants to roam a lot, since you can just hit a tower between waves as well. Mage bot laners have been good for quite a while, but one weakness that they have is being weak tower takers, but Ziggs is anything but that. In fact, with a few items, he melts towers faster than just about any other marksman, as long as he spams spells to cycle his passive a few times. You can even throw a Lich Bane into the build if tower taking is going to be your primary focus. And our last bot lane pick is also not an AD carry, but Seraphine. Kind of like Malzahar for mid laners, Seraphine is for the bot laner players that are okay with not being the main carry on a team. But instead of doing ridiculous damage like Mal's, you're providing an insane amount of utility. It may not be you directly melting the enemy's health bars, but enabling your team can be just as, if not even more, impactful in fights. Similar to Ziggs, Seraphine has actually been very good as a bot carry while struggling in other roles. The bus last patch made her more viable as a supported mid laner, but still, bot carry is where she does best. Your primary focus is to be a scaling support, but in the early game, you'll play much more of a control mage with an emphasis on short burst trades and then clearing out minion waves. In certain instances, you may see opportunities to go for 2v2 kills, but most of the time that's not going to be the case. Seraphine's entire design means that she's stronger with more allies nearby. So with that in mind, keep your aggression to a minimum and wait until a fight around an objective happens. 
Outside of lane phase, as already stated, you'll basically be a support in fights, but since you're building more expensive items, you should still be clearing out waves. Thankfully, her Q and E do plenty of AoE damage, so soaking up farm is not going to be an issue. You'll mainly want to be planted in mid lane, which tends to be safer, but if you have to clear a side wave, just push out the wave and leave. There is basically no such thing as winning side lane matchups for Seraphine. And now for supports, we'll start off with my main champion, Bard. Regardless of the meta, Bard has been a top tier pick for all of Season 11. This is because he has an extremely flexible playstyle. He can go aggressive, completely passive, play for roams, or even a mix of all three. Against aggressive melee supports, his ranged autos and Q give him a lot of poke, with the slows and stun making it really hard for them to do anything in response. Even if they do find it engaged, the heal, shield, and speed from his W and Guardian allow for a quick escape. Against squishier supports like enchanters and mages, his CC and damage allows you to set up your AD carry to get kills, and since those lanes often come down to sustained battles, you can also use your W to give your AD carry a personal healing fountain. And also regardless of the matchup, he is amazing at gank setups, with his E allowing you to even portal in your jungler from otherwise impossible angles. Even tower dies are a breeze, since you can just disable them with your ult. Just make sure that you don't catch an unintended target in it when you lob it out. Outside of lane phase, Bard has basically unlimited playmaking potential, because his ult can be used for making picks, engaging full on fights, or even outplaying the enemy team during fights. He can stop Garth's ult from getting a last hit on a low HP ally, or even deny a Rift Herald charge on a tower. Now our second support pick is Janna. She's a great champion to main if you enjoy enchanters, but still want some map presence, which she has thanks to the movement that she gets from her passive and W. While maybe not as scary as a roaming Blitzcrank or Alistair, that's kinda why it works so well. Most people are not gonna expect a roaming Janna to their lane at level 3 or 4, so you can actually get some surprisingly easy ganks on disrespectful mid laners. Or you can use your super speed to get around the map to get good vision control. It may not be the most exciting aspect of League of Legends, but getting wards down in the enemy jungle gives a lot of valuable information, and can prevent a lot of unnecessary deaths. But aside from her roams, Janna also provides a decent amount of pressure in lane, with constant spamming of W giving you some solid trading. If you really want to be a lane bully too, you can actually change Airy to Comet, Transcendence to Absolute Focus, and Gathering Storm to Scorch for maximum poking potential. And out of lane, we all know Janna's got some of the best peel in the game, with her Tornado and Ultimate making it pretty much impossible for most divers to take down your carries. Just remember to fully channel your ult when appropriate. Too many Janna players just tap R and run away, but the heal from the ultimate is insane and can easily win you teamfights. And finishing off our list, we have Soraka. She's basically a health battery for allies, constantly recharging them to power through fights. If you like the idea of that, well, she's going to be the pick for you. In lane, despite being a healer, Soraka should actually be played pretty aggressively. In fact, it's kind of the only way to play her right. Her Q does a pretty nice chunk of damage, and hitting it massively cuts the heal cost on her W, making it heal for more and do less damage to you. If you just sit back and try to spam W, you won't really do much for your AD carry, and you'll also have to go back to base for more HP in just a few casts. But as the game goes and you pick up more healing power from items, your heal starts to get pretty fat. Even with Grievous Wounds on allies, you can power heal them for quite a bit. But it's not just her heals that make Soraka so good in teamfights. Her E is a massively strong utility spell, but with its relatively long cooldown, you gotta make sure that you're picky on how you use it. Don't just throw it out for damage. It is especially useful for preventing dive assassins from having their way. Throw it out as a Zed dives in with his ult, and he's unable to combo his spells to one-shot his target. Nor can he swap back to his shadow. And it can also be used to layer on top of an ally's CC. The silence prevents your opponent from flashing out after the initial CC wears off, and if used quickly enough, they may not even be able to escape from the zone before the root kicks in. And the last ability to talk about is her ultimate. Soraka's ult is one of the best abilities in the game for completely turning a fight around, so make sure to work on your map awareness. Being able to win a topside skirmish from bot lane is a tool that no other support in the game has, save for maybe Senna. Just make sure that you're using it when you need to, not just because you can. The cooldown is incredibly long early game, and you don't want to waste it unnecessarily. And that's going to be it for our top three champions of main on 11.15. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you're subbed to the channel so you never miss out on our meta guides and you're always in the loop of what the best picks are. Also, remember to let us know what champion you think is good but rarely seen in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description. That's it for the video, so best of luck on the grind, everybody. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one.